This was not really a month wrought with a lot of physical changes. It was mostly a lot of philosophical changes. So what I have before me is an old picture of myself. This was a subject that was brought up a few times during this month, and I figure it's worth mentioning here at least a few different ways. What really started this conversation is a co-worker found a relatively old picture of me. And by relatively, I mean it was from the before times, as I call it. It was a really weird feeling to look back and see what I used to look like. <laughs> On one hand, I was quite happy because I could see quite a substantial difference from that picture to what I see now. But at the same time, I'm kind of brought back to that same mindset that I was in that time as well. I'm reminded why I didn't like looking into mirrors, why I thought it was a creep or ugly, I had all these other problems of self-image. But yet the crazy thing is, when I look back further, like really early childhood from when this wasn't as much of a problem, I find that I can stand those pictures all right. But at the same time, I'm just kind of like, wow, only that little kid knew what the future would have had in store for him. Basically anything like junior high onward is where it gets to the point of, okay, that's really cringy. And I've talked to a lot of other people about this particular subject as well. There are some that wanted all records of anything in the before times to be completely destroyed. They didn't want to be reminded of it. I'm kind of in that boat, as in I don't want to be reminded that I used to be a man, but at the same time, I feel I don't want to completely throw everything away. I mean, yeah, while there was a lot of difficult times in there, there were quite a few happy times. A few lessons that I learned along the way, and, well, I kind of owe a lot to who I am today thanks to that little boy so many years ago. So that's my first big philosophical thing. The next happened really recently, actually, the tail end of April. And this seemed like something important to mention as well. So a friend of mine was going on a tirade about how all white men are the worst thing that happened to this planet since Adolf Hitler. It was one of those things I had to really stop and think about because I felt highly offended by that. Which I couldn't understand because I'm a white woman now. At the same time, I spent a lot more of my life living as a white male. So I guess it's interesting that I still kind of retain a little bit of that old self within me as well. Which almost kind of begs the question, and my co-worker when they showed me this photo brought this up as well, is that the old me doesn't exist anymore. It were a thing, and then I showed up. Some people would kind of think about it as like, I perhaps destroyed the old me. But I guess I look at it like physics. The idea that energy is something that can't be created or destroyed, but it can be modified. And that was kind of the mentality I was going with here as well. But I just thought it was interesting that that little piece of me is still there. It's something I kind of want to repress though as, well, I I want to be a woman now. I, I don't want to be thought of as a man, but yet if somebody says men are evil, I guess I'm going to go more ready for their help, so to speak. It's a very weird thing and I'm still trying to come to grips with it as well. 
And now on to a more, I guess you could say, uplifting story. I feel like I've been kind of dour up until this point. So at my work, they've instituted a new uniform policy. And as such, there was a day that we were all being measured, as well as just given samples of everything this new uniform company can provide. The person in charge definitely took it like a champ, but I could still very well see they were shocked when I said, do any of these come in women's sizes? I had a little bit of a laugh afterwards as, uh, well, this is something that most of the people at the company are just kind of used to. And this outsider was just kind of like, um, is, are they? <laughs> and then everyone was just kind of like, yep. But all the same, I think that kind of leads into my next talking point a little bit. And that's the idea of trying to buy women's pants. So, the hormones have kind of added a few little curves to me here and there. I have a more feminine figure now. However, there's two big problems with this. The first is just with women's fashion in general. There's no pockets. Either that or there's some sadistic people out there that have like the indentation of a pocket, but it's sewed shut. What good is that to anyone? And on top of that, this is my phone. This is not going to fit in any women's pants. I've yet to see women's pants that not only have pockets, but really deep pockets. And then one of the other things as well. There's a lot of women out there that don't have a, shall we say, a, a certain roundness to the crotch area. So that's kind of something you have to figure out as well. I know I've heard some other people talk about this idea of binding or stuff like that, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds very painful. Of course, this is also coming from the woman that just wants to get it removed in the first place, so I don't know. Different strokes for different folks? Shirts, I think, are pretty easy. But the general problem with buying shirts and pants is that, well, there's two different sizes. And each size varies by company. So with men's, the waist is usually measured in inches. So I used to be like a size 32, I want to say. With women's, you almost kind of need a conversion chart to figure out what that means. In fact, I had to try on a few different pants to just kind of figure out what worked for me. And I found out that I'm roughly a size 8. But once again, this depends on the manufacturer, the cut, and it's just a mess. And shirts, well, I never really get shirts for the size, if that makes any sense. Usually what I do is, well, I go to a lot of thrift stores. I go there and hold it up to myself, and I'm like, okay, I think this will fit. And then I try it on, and that's perfectly fine. And plus, I kind of like baggy shirts, so it doesn't really matter as much. And days where I'm feeling very feminine, I don't mind tight shirts either. But at the same time, I'm not sure how everybody at work is going to feel about... I don't know if I wore a shirt like this, but it was like really tight. <laughs> That's really hard to show off, isn't it? But whatever. I guess probably one last thing to mention... So, I've gotten used to the idea of being a woman. In fact, I prefer it. Even if I'm just having a down day, I can just remember that I am a woman on the proper hormones, and it just makes me so happy. <laughs> it, it'll just always take away any frown that I have. But occasionally, I like to be nice. Hold open the door for people, you know, stuff like that. And usually it's followed by, thank you, sir. And I'm just like, come on. 
I'll take anything, but not sir. That wasn't even a term I liked even before I knew I was trans. I always thought sir was a term reserved for people that were like 45 and older. So much like the white men argument earlier, it still feels like I've still got a bit of that little man in me, I guess. I guess I still want to be a gentleman. I, I like to hold open the doors for people. I, I like to be nice. And being a woman, it's almost expected you're supposed to be a little more selfish. Like, we're thought of as the more inferior gender, so people have to protect us. And I'm just not used to that mentality at all. I mean, it was really just me for a while. I had to defend myself. Now I have to rely on others to do it. That's going to take a while for me to get used to. But the other thing as well, is it just kind of brings me back to, yeah, I still look like a man to a lot of people, and I'm just wondering what more can I do? I I thought I was putting in the effort. What, what am I doing wrong here? I, I don't understand it. This was a pretty dark update, wasn't it? I feel like I should probably end with something happy, at least. Well... I think I've got one thing that can bring a little joy. So, if anybody were to ever ask me the question, why did I transition in the first place? I have a very simple answer to that. I'm happy this way. <laughs> it's often like the tiniest and most mundane thing that makes me happy. Like, for example, there are some days I just wake up and... My hair is like over here, and I'm just kind of like, I have long hair now, I love it. Or I'll just kind of look at myself in the mirror after I wake up, and I'll think, wow, even with all this bedhead, no makeup, and all this other stuff, I still think I look fantastic. And it's just a lot of simple things if people use the proper pronouns for me, if and I've probably mentioned this in some other videos as well, but, well, I like to cuddle now. I don't really have a whole lot of people to cuddle to, but sometimes it's just nice, for instance, I'll kind of sit on this couch like this. And to me, this feels very comfortable. I feel fine. I feel warm. I feel very fuzzy. <laughs> And another thing I'll mention as well, and I'll probably end it here, is I like to talk to other trans people about their experiences. Sometimes I just need a little reminder about how far I've come. Like, for instance, I'll kind of talk to other trans people that are just recently out and they wish they were on hormones. And here I am, being a little more than a year and a half on hormones, and... Well, I still feel like I haven't made a whole lot of progress at times. But I guess that's just it. Sometimes you need somebody to put it into perspective for you. And plus, it's just kind of fun to, uh, what I'm going to say, nerd over shared experiences. <laughs> like, for example, I remember talking to this one group of transgender people. A lot of trans femme, I want to say. And... I just remember one of us was just like, how do you feel about playing as female characters in video games? And like, all in a chorus, we were just kind of like, we, we just felt like it was wrong. Like, we weren't allowed to do that. And it's just nice to know that you're not a lone freak anymore. <laughs> you have a shared experience. It's, it's a lot of fun. I think that's a happy note to end upon. Well... Part of me feels like this is short, so if you have, like, any other questions, anything you'd like to share, let me know. In the, let me know in the comments. I'll talk about pretty much anything, except politics, but I think I've made that pretty clear already. Until next time, be yourself, no matter who that is. <laughs>